Today, we're going to be talking about section 2.2, which is about our trigonometric functions in acute angles. So what we're going to start with is remembering back to our geometry class. We had an acronym called SOKATOA, and that was a way to, for us to help remind us or remember the definitions for a these three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. So what the definition for sine, cosine, and tangent says is that in a right triangle, must be a right triangle, with some acute angle theta, I'm going to specify this angle here as my theta. We can name, we'll refer to the three sides of the triangle. The hypotenuse is always the longest side. The other arm that makes up my angle theta, we're going to refer to as the adjacent side. And then the side that's directly across from my angle, we're going to refer to as the opposite side. So when we see SOH from SOHCAHTOA, what that says is that sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. When we see the CA in SOHCAHTOA, we see that cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Or when we see the TOA, we know that tangent theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So one question that might arise at this point is, how come we didn't define something for say, uh, hypotenuse over adjacent. Why did it have to be opposite over hypotenuse? Couldn't we have defined a function for the other ratio? Hypotenuse over opposite? Well, yes, we can. And in fact, in this trigonom trigonometry class, we do. So there's actually six trig functions. The next one is cosecant, which is just the reciprocal of sine opposite over hypotenuse. The next one is secant, which is just the reciprocal of cosine, so hypotenuse over adjacent. And the last one is cotangent, which is just the reciprocal of tangent, so that's adjacent over opposite. So when we talk about the six trig functions, these are what we're talking about. Let's do an example. So this first example, we're asked to write the six trig functions for theta. Well, at this point, you would say, I can't do this question. Why not? Well, the answer is, look at the triangle. There's something missing in this triangle. Although it looks like it might be a right triangle, we're not told explicitly that it is. And at this point, we are unable to deal with the situation where we have a non-right triangle. Now, if we're told that this is a right triangle, now we can do this problem. So make sure that you are dealing with a right triangle before you attempt to use these six definitions of sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent that we're about to employ 
And we're okay to do that now because I've added in that piece of information that this is indeed a right triangle. You can't write that in yourself. It needs to be part of the problem. I can write it in because it's my example. So I'm going to start by observing that there's another piece of information that's kind of missing. I only know the side lengths of two of the three sides of the triangle. I'm missing the hypotenuse, but that's okay. Since this is a right triangle, I know the Pythagorean theorem holds. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, where the a and b are the legs of my triangle, and the c is the hypotenuse. So I can say that 5 squared plus 2 squared is equal to c squared. Order of operations says the first thing I need to do is take care of the exponents. 5 squared is 25, and 2 squared is 4. 25 plus 4 is 29. And then we'll square root both sides to get the c by itself. So c is the square root of 29. Now you could turn that into a decimal, but almost never are we going to ask that you do that. Leaving it in exact form is typically going to be what we prefer. So don't turn your radicals into decimals. So we have this side is the square root of 29. Okay, so first one up is sine theta. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So I have 5 over the square root of 29. Now this is not the way we'd like to leave our final answer because we don't want to leave a radical in the denominator, in particular when that radical is over a constant. So to rationalize our denominator, we'll multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 29. So 5 times the square root of 29, there's nothing to do because we can't multiply directly things under a radical and things outside of a radical. So we'll just squish them together like you would do 5 times x becomes 5x. But the square root of 29 times the square root of 29 is the square root of 29 squared. And the square and the square root cancel. So we'll be left with 5 square root 29 all over 29. Now on to cosine theta. Cosine theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's 2 over the square root of 29. And just like before, we'll rationalize the denominator using the same steps we did above and have 2 times the square root of 29 over 29. Next up is tangent. So tangent theta is opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be 5 over 2. And now we want to do cosecant. So cosecant is easy because it's just going to be the reciprocal of sine. So I'll take my original before I rationalized, and I'll just flip it, and that'll be my cosecant. After that is secant, which again we said was the reciprocal of cosine. So I'll take my original before I rationalized, and then just flip it. And my last one is cotangent, which again is the reciprocal of tangent. So I'll just take my answer and I'll flip it. So those are my six values. Okay. So let's say that theta is an acute angle in a right triangle, and we're told if sine theta equals one-third to find the other five trigonometric ratios. 
So I'm going to start by drawing a picture. So here I'm going to draw my right triangle. And I'm going to pick one of the angles to be theta. I'll pick that one. Now I'm going to start filling in some side lengths. I know that sine theta is one third, but I also know that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So I know the hypotenuse is three, and the side opposite theta is one. I know two of the three sides in a right triangle, so I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. One is one of my legs, so I'll write one squared. C is the hypotenuse, so I have three squared. And what we're looking for is the second leg, so that's going to be my b squared. So order of operations says to do the exponents first. And then I'll solve for b by subtracting one from both sides. And then we'll square root both sides of my equation. I don't have to worry about the plus or minus because we're talking about side lengths of a triangle, which can never be negative. And then I notice that the square root of 8 can reduce because the square root of 8 is 4, or the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And I know that I can break multiplication at or break a square root at multiplication, and the square root of 4 is 2. So I have 2 root 2. Now that I have the three sides of my right triangle, I can write down the other five trig ratios pretty quickly. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Uh-oh, but that gives me a radical in the denominator. To fix that, I'm just going to multiply both sides by the radical, or the top and bottom by the radical. So that's going to give me square root of 2. And then I still have the 2 right here. And square root of 2 times square root of 2 is square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is just 2. So this reduces down to root 2 over 4. Now cosecant is easy because it's just the reciprocal of sine. So it's going to be 3 over 1. Um, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So that's going to be 3 over 2 root 2. And just like here, I'll rationalize the denominator, multiplying the top and bottom by root 2. So that's going to be 3 root 2 over 4. Again, 2 and then the square root of 4, so 2 times 2. And my last, oh yeah, my last one is cotangent theta, which is going to be the reciprocal of tangent. So I'm going to have square root 2 over, or square root 2, I'm sorry, 2 square root 2 over 1, which is fine. That just turns into 2 square root 2. And then I'm done. Next up is let's say we want to find the sine of 30 without our calculator. Well, this is easy if you remember our definition for special right triangles. So if you remember back to geometry class, there's a special right triangle called the 30-60-90 triangle. whose side lengths have the following values. So the hypotenuse is 2x. The side opposite the 30 degree angle is x. And the side opposite the 60 degree angle is x root 
3. So sine of 30 then is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which just reduces down to 1 half. Worth mentioning the other special right triangle that we would expect you to know. So we have the 30, 60, 90. The other one that we'd expect you to remember is the 45, 45, 90 triangle. Whose sides, whose leg lengths are both x and whose hypotenuse is x square root through 2. And that's the 45, 45, 90. Those are two ones that you'll want to have, probably want to have memorized because uh, we'll use them a lot. Uh, next example. Next example says find sine of 17. Well, we did 17 is not one of these special right triangles. It's not 30 degrees or 60 degrees or 45 degrees. So we can't find this exactly with the tools that we have available to us. Luckily, our calculator can handle this. So we'll call up our calculator. The first thing I'm going to want to do is I want to check my mode on my calculator. So I'm going to press the mode button right next to the blue second button. And I want to check to make sure what mode my calculator is in. Currently, my calculator is in radian mode. That's typically the default. This problem, though, the angle is in degrees. So I'm going to move my option to degree and then press Enter. And then exit back out by pressing second in mode. Then I can press the sign button, which is right here, a little bit above the number 7. And I can just type in 17 and press enter to get about 0.292. What if we had asked you to do like secant? of 78. If I go back to my calculator, I have a sine, I have a cosine, and I have a tangent, but I don't have a secant button. Well, never fear. Remember that secant was the reciprocal of cosine. So I can do 1 over cosine. 78. And I get about Next, our next example asks us to solve the triangle. So when we get a direction like this, like solve a triangle, we're going to be asked to figure out all of the other angle measures and all the other side lengths. So in this case, we have an angle measure I'll call x, this side which I'll refer to as y, and this side that I'll refer to as z. Now the easiest thing to find first is to find that angle x because I already know two of the three angle measures in my right triangle. I remember from geometry that the sum of the interior angles for any triangle equals 180 degrees. That was called the triangle sum theorem. So if I add those together I get 131 degrees, and if I subtract 131 from both sides, I get that x is equal to 49 degrees. One down. 
Next, I'll pick a side length to try to solve for. Let's say we want to solve for y. Okay. Once I've decided that I'm going to solve for y, I'm going to pick an angle measure to use. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to say pick angle 41. So what I'll need then is another side length that I know the measure of. Well, that has to be the 12. So I need something that relates the opposite and the adjacent sides. That would be tangent. So I know tangent to 41 is equal to opposite over adjacent. To get the y by itself, I'll multiply both sides by 12. And then I'll type in 12 times tangent 41 into my calculator. Again, if you're just pulling your calculator out, you'd want to start by checking your mode. Make sure you're in degree mode like we did just a few moments ago. I know I'm still in degree mode because I haven't really turned my calculator off. So I got about 10.43. Well, 431. I'll round these to three decimal places. Okay. And then the last one now is Z. So I'm going to use Z. And I'm going to pick an angle to use. Let's use angle 41 again. It doesn't really matter. You could use the 49 degree one. That's also. And then I need to use a side length. Now I could use 12 again, or since I've just found out y, I could use y. Now is there a difference between using y and 12? Um, a little bit. 12 is going to be the better one to choose because there's no rounding involved with the number 12. If we use y, the answer that we have for y was rounded to three decimal places. So the answer we get for z is going to be a little less accurate if we used y opposed to using 12. So I'm going to use 12. So again, looking at my 41, the 12 is the adjacent, and the z is the, op, or the hypotenuse. So I need to use cosine. So cosine of 41 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, and now I'm going to multiply both sides by z to get rid of the fraction, and then divide both sides by cosine 41. Remember, cosine 41 is just a number, right? It's something you type in your calculator. It's just a decimal. Now, you could at this point make the decimal and then divide it over. But if you round, then you're like adding extra inaccuracy, and I like to just kind of leave it all in one as one name until I got it to where I want to put it in my calculator. I find that the easiest way to do that. So I'm going to do 12 divided by cosine 41. And when I type that into my calculator, I get about 15.900. And that's it for this section.